So, um, I'm talking to Charles Hume, who's an expert on interventions for children with reading problems. And one of the first questions I'd like to ask you, Charles, is whether there are interventions that can help reading in children who have language problems. Oh, I think there are. Um, I think when we talk about interventions for children with language problems who have reading problems, it's probably important to understand that there are different sorts of reading problems that children can have. Broadly, some children have problems learning to decode and print, that is to translate written words into their spoken form, and other children can do that part of reading okay, but don't really understand what they're reading. Both those sorts of problems are amenable to help, but the sorts of help that children need to overcome those sorts of problems are very different. So the children who have problems in decoding what they're reading need help to understand the relationships between the letters in written words and the sounds in spoken words, and that can be achieved by interventions that essentially help children to understand the um, way in which spoken words can be decomposed into their individual sounds. So a word like cat can be broken into a k and a t sound and they also need to learn the way those sounds relate to the letters that are used to spell words. So does this relate to the business that people are trying to train children to read nonsense words that have been caused a lot of uproar in the government? <laughs> well, um, to the extent to which you understand the way the system works like that, you would be good at reading non-words that you right. haven't seen before but I wouldn't talk about training people to read non-words. Right. You're training them to read words, and if they understand the principles by which you can read any word, that will enable you to read a non-word which you've not seen before. So it's really a way of testing whether they've got that knowledge. Exactly. And what about the other type of problem? Now, the other type of problem is much less understood, really, but those children broadly have problems in understanding language, whether it's in spoken language or written form. And there's very good evidence now that children between the ages of about four and a half and eight or nine year old children can be given specialist help uh, in school to focus on their understanding of spoken language, to give them practice in um, listening to stories, answering questions about them, teach them vocabulary that they mm -hmm. don't know, give them sets of pictures to tell stories about so they have to use their own language. And all of these rather different forms of exercises can certainly help to reduce the problems in understanding language that children have. And there's good evidence that those sorts of exercises translate to help those children comprehend what they read better, if, right. assuming they can decode it okay. Yes, so you're really using um, language comprehension training to help with reading comprehension as well. Exactly. These sorts of interventions, um, do we actually know how well they work with children? Yes, both of the sorts of interventions I've described to you have been evaluated in quite a number of so-called randomised controlled trials. Mm -hmm. Those are studies where you take children with form of difficulty and you randomly assign them to um, two or more groups but let's just say you're interested in whether an intervention works so you randomly assign the children to two groups one of which will get the intervention and one of which will wait until the mm -hmm. other group have had the intervention let's say you then give the intervention for six months at the end of six months you then retest all the children the ones that have had the intervention and the ones that haven't and you can show in studies of that sort that interventions to boost decoding by focusing on letter knowledge and phonological awareness are effective in boosting decoding. And you can show that um, interventions to boost language comprehension have positive effects on both language comprehension and reading comprehension. Right. Um, now, of course, there's a lot of other interventions out there. If you just go on to the internet, you can find people offering all sorts of things, some of which don't 
adopt the sort of principles you're talking about, but which sound very convincing, sort of they offer your child brain training and suggest there's all sorts of things they can do to modify the brain. How is it possible for parents to sort of make their way through this and work out whether something is a good idea and whether it's likely to be effective for their child? Mm. Um, what you say is true and it's something that bothers me a lot. I think what I'd say to any parent who's interested in an intervention is, first of all, is the intervention, as you described to you, plausible as a way of helping your child mm. with the difficulties they have? Um, the, the interventions I've talked about are very kind of commonsensical in a way. We take a skill that the child is deficient in and we train the skill very directly. Um, if I want to learn to play tennis, I need to go and have lessons about how to hold the racket and how to hit the ball. I don't think uh, uh, being talked to about how to play tennis or practicing playing another game is going to help me play tennis. Equally, if I can't read, I need instruction directly in the aspects of reading that I find difficult and they should work. Right. And on the other hand, people might say, well, they give the children these interventions before and then afterwards they do much, much better. Isn't that evidence enough if, you, if they have satisfied parents saying my child is reading is better than it used to be? Really, I feel that any parent who is offered an intervention should ask, is there evidence from a randomised control trial that shows that this works better than doing nothing? Awesome. And some of the interventions that are marketed, unfortunately, don't have evidence that that's true, and that's really the most basic sort of evidence that you would so, want. So that's what you were talking about before, about the sort of evidence that, that you and others have gathered for some of these um, interventions where you actually have a control group, so you can exactly. demonstrate that it's exactly. better than just the passage of time and your child getting older. And so. Exactly. So the control group probably improve a little bit on reading because there's been six months between yes. the two tests. But what we're looking for are improvements mm -hmm. in the intervention group that are much greater than the mm -hmm. control group.